really am just another 12 year old kid and you can ask any of my friends but the only thing that separates me from other 12 year olds or other kids my age would be the fact that I found a passion and an interest in being an activist. I think the first time I was really inspired, really motivated to do good in the world was at the age of four. A powerful earthquake in northwest India, 7.9 on the Richter scale, killed more than 2,000 people to date. And I just made the connection if, well, if an earthquake happened here, that I was four years old at the time, I wouldn't want my dad dying. And I said, well, I have to do something about it. Sunday's devastation and rising death toll are the end result of what scientists are calling the perfect tsunami. And the next morning, I look in the newspaper, front page, tsunami hit Southeast Asia, 100,000 already dead. So I put together this plan, and the plan was basically for each and every child across Canada to raise $100 each. Because the goal for this, for this cause was a million dollars. It started as a challenge to Canadian children. We kids have to raise funds for UNICEF to help the surviving children and mushroomed into a national campaign, the children raising nearly $2 million. And it was amazing how, how kids across Canada really got together to perform one task to help others around the world. And it really shows if, if humanity comes together, just Canada itself comes together, we can do huge things. We can make a huge difference. Hi, how are you? Pleasure how to meet you. You, you right, too. Thank you. Come inside. And my goal right now to do with fundraising is to inspire a million kids to get involved. A million kids to make a difference in the world. That's my goal. And it's all about letting youth know about what's going on in the world in schools across Canada, around the world. One thing that we can use to make a difference is action. I think getting kids involved is simply letting them realize that in the next 15, 20 years, we're going to be the world leaders. And being world leaders, we have responsibilities. And instead of getting started then, why not get started now? I want to hear you all say it. So when do we take action? Now! Absolutely. at the Safari Lodge. We heard about a singing group of orphans who actually raises funds and asks for donations when they sing. Um, and all the proceeds go towards their education and what they need at the time. So we decided to bring them to the lodge. So I don't mean to rush you, but we're ready to start. So okay. <laughs> Do you also want to come to watch the dance group? Or starting? We have here today Steve's traditional dance group, and they're going to show us a few traditional dances. And all the donations go towards their education, Basically, their quality of life and improving it, so um, enjoy. <laughs> everyone. They were all amazed at how amazing these dancers were um, and it was very, very, they were very, very talented. I really believe that Steve, this guy who's given up his whole life just to help his children, is really passionate about what he does. Let's pray first. <laughs> Amen. This is a great, wonderful present. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Well, we just arrived in the Cape Town. It's late at night. Um, we just came from the airport. Tomorrow we're going to meet some government officials who are going to show us around a few projects in Cape Town. So I look forward to that, and I can't wait to get that started. So I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, I'll talk to you later.
Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to home. Thank you. Please come in. Doesn't look like he's well. These children are really dying and rapidly. It was frustrating. Every single time you came onto the ward, there was another child dying. These kids that have absolutely nothing, whose parents have died or are dying from HIV and AIDS, still go on with their life. It really shows me how much we have and how much we need to appreciate life. Usually, children your age um, are the ones we have to help. So it's a completely different scenario now that there is a, a child that actually takes action, which for here, I think for Africa, we can all say that this is a very, very un unusual thing. I think my biggest challenge to do with being an activist is others not taking me seriously because I'm a 12-year-old kid. That not only is that my biggest challenge, but it's my biggest pet peeve. That others have the limiting belief that because you're too young or too old, you can't do anything, that you're not powerful enough to make a difference in the world. And it's all about getting the stigma, if you want to call it, that young people can't do anything out of people's minds. Because they can. This trip to South Africa was to meet Nelson Mandela. You know, I was invited to meet him because I'd sent him a birthday card with my book and thanking him for all the great work he's doing. And he asked me to come visit him. I asked too many questions, I think, but I really took away from the meeting was that you really need to work as a group, to work as a team, to be able to make a difference. One person can make a difference, but a group of people can change the world. This trip to South Africa has really been about getting involved, getting to see what South Africa is about, how much we need to help, um, and speaking to kids once again about empowerment. It's been a great trip here. I've been able to do so much. I've been able to see so much. I really love penguins and in December what I hope to do is I hope to go to Antarctica for a geology trip to discover more about the environment, um, how we're destroying it. And I hope to speak internationally about how we can make a difference um, and how we can stop destroying what really is beautiful on this earth. Really, who can we help? What poverty can we eradicate when there's no one who's poor because there are no people?